Hello and welcome to another intermediate RenPy tutorial. So in this one, we're going to get into some really cool things using advanced variable declarations and object-oriented programming. So before we dive in, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and hit my notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. Um, so I'm going to start uploading things pretty consistently, hopefully from here on out. And uh, as I stated before, we've got lots of cool things coming up, starting with this video. So, um, if you need a refresher on object-oriented programming, be sure to check out my earlier videos on that that I will link to above. Having at least a basic understanding of OOP is going to be necessary to fully understand the things that we're going to be doing in this video, so be sure you check those out. Um, it has a reputation as being a really advanced concept, but it's really not that difficult to get the basics down. Um, so before we get into OOP, I want to talk a little bit about variable declarations and how we uh, how we declare variables in RenPy specifically. So right now I've got two scripts open. I've got my main script.rpy, which is effectively completely empty. I've got my start label and my return. That is all. And then I've got my regular characters folder that I've been working with in my last couple of videos. And whenever I define my characters up here, basically I'm declaring variables. And there are a few different ways to declare variables in RenPy. One way is just to declare the variable. Like I could say, um, like let's say that I wanted my characters to all have an affection value that determines how they feel about the main character. A higher affection value means they like you more. A lower affection value means they like you less. So I could create that by just saying Chelsea underscore affection equals zero. It'll start at zero. Um, that is, generally speaking, not the best way to define variables because that way it just defines them whenever they're encountered in the script. Um, I like to make sure that all of my important variables are declared at the very, very beginning. And the way that we do that is by using initialization keywords. For instance, uh, up here, we use the define keyword. Define the name of your variable equals and then the values that you assign to those variables. Um, so whenever you use the keyword define, that basically says to um, assign that value at the very beginning, right when you open the program, before it loads anything else, it defines these variables. So again, these are initialization variables. They're initialized as soon as your game starts running. Um, you can also use the default keyword. So I might do default uh, Chelsea underscore affection equals zero. So this does pretty much the same thing. It declares this variable right at the very beginning of, of the game being run before anything else happens in the script. Generally speaking, you want to use define for values that do not change, values that are going to remain constant, such as your characters. Like we know that your characters are always going to have the same name and always going to have the same text color. Those don't change, so we use the define keyword. Um, however, something like the affection level will probably change throughout the course of the game, depending on choices that you make, different things that you say in dialogue. So we use the default keyword. This is the default value for that, but it can change later on. All right, once you have a good understanding of that, I want to move on to um, object oriented programming. And we actually use objects all the time in Python without even really thinking about it. We also use them in RenPy. Take for instance our characters. Every time we define one of these characters, we're creating a character object. And all an object is is a piece of data that has certain attributes and certain functions that we can act upon it, or certain functions that it can act upon our game. For instance, whenever we create a character object, we are telling it that it has the attribute name, which in this case is Steven, and it also has the attribute color, which determines what color its text is whenever it, um, whenever it occurs in our game, whenever we use it to, uh, uh, to affect dialogue. Now there are a few other different functions that they can have, different optional arguments and parameters that we're not really going to get into right now. But what I want to talk about is how to create your own custom objects. 
um, where we can basically extend the functionality of these. Like what if we wanted it to do more than just have the name and the color and be able to do more than just say things. We talked about the say screen, the say function uh, in, in our last video. But what if we wanted it to do more things? That's what we're going to get into today. So again, be sure you check out my earlier OOP videos because um, we are about to dive in and get into some object-oriented programming. So before we get into defining classes and defining our objects, I'm going to show you why exactly this is going to be extremely useful and why this is going to save us a ton of time in the long run. So a moment ago, I created this Chelsea affection variable. So if one person has an affection level, then probably all of my characters are going to have affection levels. So right now I have the Steven character, the Luna character, and the Chelsea character. So I might do default Luna underscore affection equals zero and oops, default Steven underscore affection equals zero. All right, not that bad, just three lines of code to create that attribute. But let's say later that I wanted to add things to it. Let's say that I wanted to have actual attributes of these characters. Like let's say I wanted to determine how, uh, how much they care about like sports, how athletic they are, and then how much they care about school, which I will call, uh, let's call that, um, I don't wanna call it education. No. So let's call that uh, academics. We'll do athletics and academics. Then I have to do default Chelsea underscore athletics equals, you know, whatever the value is. Oops, and I spelled default correctly. Equals zero default Steven athletics equals zero and Default Luna underscore athletics. You can see that this is starting to get a little unwieldy because I've got to do that three times for every attribute. And that's only because I only have three characters in this game. What if you have a dozen characters? What if you get like partway through your development and have a really cool idea for another type of attribute? Then you've got to go back in your code to find that new attribute for every single character that you have. However, by using objects, you will only have to change that in one place. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of these attributes. And we're going to create those up here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a class. That is going to be our object that represents our actors, all of our characters. Um, so I can't call this class character because there is already a character class, a character object that we see down here. So we're going to have to call it something else. I'm going to call it actor. Um, and we want this to run at initialization. And we're going to do it differently than we did before. We're not going to use the define or the default keyword, but I'm going to tell RimPy to run this entire block of Python code at initialization. And we do that by typing in init Python. That tells us that we have a Python block and we're going to run it at the initialization point, the very beginning of our, of our script. Um, all right, and in that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to declare our class, uh, which we're going to call actor. And as with all classes, the first thing that we need is an initializer, an initialization function. So we're going to do define under, double underscore init double underscore. And we need to pass it a series of arguments. Of course, self always has to be the first argument for an initializer. Then we're going to pass in a character argument, which is going to be our character object down here. So we that way we can borrow all of the functionality of that character object without having to redefine everything. Then we're going to give our character a name. Uh, we're going to give it our attributes, athletics, uh, what did I say, academics. And the final one will be affection. There we go. Then after that, we have to initialize all of our variables. So I'm going to shorten character to just the letter C. You will see why in a moment we're gonna to have to call this one a lot coming up. So self.c equals character. Oops, make sure that is all lowercase, there we go. Then self.name equals name. These other ones we're just gonna leave the same because that's going to be easier in the long run. Self.athletics equals athletics. And finally, oh wait, no, no, two more, sorry. Self.academics equals 
academics, and now finally self.affection equals affection. There we go. So now, whenever we define our characters, um, first of all, we're going to do that a little bit differently. So for instance, for our character Luna, let me go ahead and comment these out. And we're going to redefine all of our characters. And it happens pretty much the same way. It's just going to look a little bit different. So for Luna, now instead of doing the character, we're going to define an actor. This part gets just a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. So try to keep up with this if you can. So Luna is going to be actor. Then in parentheses, we're going to do character just like we had up here. So we're going to do character Luna. That's her name. And that's it for that one. Then we're going to pass in the rest of our arguments. Um, so we're going to pass in the name, which is going to be Luna. Oops, let me go and use double underscores or double uh, quotes to keep that consistent. And then her athletic score, which we'll make that, uh, we'll do them out of 10. So we'll say like 7 out of 10. Academics, we'll say 5 out of 10. And then affection, we'll just start all of those at a default of zero because they don't know us yet. There we go, and that's all we have to do to define our new character. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that for the other two. Define Steven, I'll skip, rush past this part. There we go, so now I've got all three of my characters defined and I've got all of our attributes there. So again, um, we have our self argument, which we don't put down here like that argument is understood. So we don't have to physically put that one in our character declaration. However, we do have to define our character. And for the character argument, you basically put in everything that we normally use to define our character. So just that exact line, we just copy that and put it right here inside uh, inside these parentheses. Exactly how it appears up there. And then a comma and then our other arguments for athletics, academics, and then affection. So we have to do that for each character that we create. There we go. So now let me go back to my script and I'm going to show you how to use uh, how to use some of these values and this new functionality. Um, so let us go ahead and oops scene. And she will say nothing. Let me go ahead and run that just to make sure we don't have any game breaking bugs at the moment. And we do. All right. Give me just a moment. Let me figure out what's up with this. Oh, I figured it out. That was pretty easy. So I just forgot to put uh, Chelsea's display name in here. So now when I run this, um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you we're going to get a little bit unexpected behavior. Let me launch project. And when I start, it kind of loads everything in. Then it says, oop, exception, Sayer Chelsea is not a function or string. So it doesn't like something in line 14 of my script.rpy file. So for some reason, it doesn't like that. Like I've got Chelsea right there, and I've got Chelsea defined over here. But the problem is, is it's looking for this character, this self.c. So now whenever I call that character, I have to do chelsea.c because it's not calling the chelsea character, it's calling the chelsea actor, in which case I have to pass that self.c. So that's how I get the character object passed to the actor object. So it's a little bit weird, kind of tough to wrap your head around. That's about as tricky as this gets though. So now if I do chelsea.c, that's my chelsea character, if I launch it, now everything works just fine. And furthermore, I can do things like that. Uh, let me see, let me try something real quick. Um, I'm actually going to use a new, um, I'm going to use a new statement equivalent um, that I did not cover in the last video, but it is a relatively easy one. It is the notify uh, function. 
and I'll show you how that works real quickly. So let me do, uh, I'm just gonna use a dollar sign because we're gonna use a Python statement and I'm gonna call rempy.notify. And this is actually a pretty cool thing that you can do. And I'm just gonna type in notify just to show you what this does. All right, let me pull that back up. So now the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna run that notify statement equivalent and boom, do you see how that little box pops up on the left that says notify? That is called the notify, uh, that's the um, um, notify screen. And you can use that to give your player any kind of information about what's going on. So one thing that you can do to that is you can pass variables into it to let your character know, or let your player know rather, if something has changed. Um, so, like I can pass any one of these variables in, really any variable, uh, but let me pass in, I'm not gonna put this in quotes because this is now a variable, not a string. I'm gonna say Chelsea dot, did I put name in there? Yeah, we'll say Chelsea dot name. So now when I run that, her name is going to pop up in that notification. So this is pretty cool because you can do things like in a lot of modern adventure games, like if you've ever played any of the Telltale games, which first of all, if you haven't, go play some of those right now, they're brilliant. Or other games like Life is Strange, if you make certain choices, it'll say this person will remember this, or this person didn't like that. Like it'll let you know whenever you do something that affects the uh, future of the game. So that's a good way to use the notify function. Yeah, so you can use that to display basically any of the variables that you want, like having to do with the character. You can do chelsea.athletics. Let's run that. And it will show us what her athletics variable is up there at the top left. And we're going to do more with that in the next video, but I think for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one uh, as it is, but take this and experiment with it. See what different attributes you can give your actors, your character classes, and uh, to see what else you can do with it. See what ideas you can come up with. So if you got something out of this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, also check in the description below for some ways to support me. If you're able to make a donation to support my production monetarily, that would be amazing. But if not, no worries. All you have to do is hit the like button, subscribe, share my videos with somebody that you think might like them. And that really helps me out tremendously. So thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.